Hey YouTube, it's Sarah here with Crimson and Wool and I wanted to go ahead and share my basic doll pattern with you guys. This is a really quick and easy project and that's what I love about this doll pattern. I will be doing more tutorials um, on specific designs, whether it's a princess or a superhero or whatnot. I'm gonna do more specific dolls and and how I make them per characters, but um, I wanted to go ahead and do just the doll itself. And so you could look forward to those videos in the future, but for now we'll go ahead and do a walkthrough on the supplies you'll need to make this doll. This doll is made with a, four, a G4 millimeter crochet hook. That's what I use for all of my dolls. That's the size that I like. The doll itself measures around five, five and a half inches in length or five and a half inches tall. I also went ahead just for, just to have for this video, I made the doll in a five millimeter crochet hook just so you could see how, if you wanted to work with a larger hook or make a larger doll that you could just change your hook size. And this measures about six and a quarter inches tall. Um, you can also double up your yarn and make a larger doll that way. I don't know the shape um, that the doll would come out in going off of this pattern, but for this tutorial and for myself, I always make my dolls in the four millimeter crochet hook and this is the size that that I like. I, I love that it's more like a chibi shorter doll. It is, I don't think it's too small and I don't think it's too big. I think it's just the perfect size, especially for those of you out there who love to work on quick projects and that is myself. I do not want to spend <laughs> hours and hours making something I just have the type of personality where I like to get things done and I like to get things done quick. And so that's what I wanted to do with this pattern. So you'll definitely need your hook, your four millimeter crochet hook. You're going to need a stitch marker. You're going to need a yarn needle, some scissors. You're gonna need some polyfill or some stuffing. You'll need nine millimeter safety eyes. And then the yarn I use is the Caron one pound yarn. I don't have the label for this color. So if I head out to Joann's today, that's where I get my yarn, the Caron one pound, um, then I'll put that in the description box below. That way you can know the color that I used. I think it's like off-white or something like that. So, um, so yes, this is what I make all my dolls in, is in this pattern. Um, so I will be definitely posting a lot more videos on specific characters or dolls that I make um, and all their details, but I just wanted to do this quick and easy basic crochet doll pattern for you. So if you would like to make this doll, then continue watching. So the doll itself is worked in one piece. Well, okay, so you make your legs, you connect those, and then you work the body and the head together. Then you make your arms and sew them on and that is it the most difficult part of this pattern is joining the legs and it's not necessarily like super difficult it just can be confusing at first to make sure you're not having too much gap or anything like that so that is probably the most detailed part of this pattern so when we get to that in the video um, I go through that a little bit slower but if you get the hang of it, then you can just continue and move on to the rest of the pattern. Um, what is great about these YouTube videos and tutorials is that you could always pause them or you could re-watch them. Um, and also please feel free to comment below um, if you have any questions that I can help further assist you in creating this doll. So yes, let's go ahead and get started. Let's get started on our legs. We want to make two legs and then we're going to connect those together. So we're going to start with a magic circle and then we are going to work a chain that does not count as our first single crochet. So now we will work six single crochets into our magic circle. Now 
Then you're going to pull the tail and close it. So you should have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six single crochets. Now we're going to work our first single crochet for round two into that first stitch. And then we'll place our stitch marker. Round two is an in increase round. So we wanna make a total of eight stitches for round two. To do that, we're gonna work a single crochet into the first two stitches. We already worked our first single crochet already and placed our stitch marker. We're gonna work a single crochet into the next stitch. And then two single crochets into the third. And we're going to repeat that pattern. One single crochet into the next two stitches and two single crochets into the last. And that should give us eight stitches. Now we're gonna get rid of this so that it's not in our way anymore. What I do is I tie the tail end just two times and then I trim it up. So we've done rounds one and two. The legs consist of eight rounds. So for rounds three through eight, we are going to work one single crochet into each stitch. As we are working that, we could create this little cup like this, and it will naturally form the leg. So working round three, one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. And don't forget to move your stitch marker up. So I will go ahead and let you work the next few rounds till you get to round eight. And I will meet you back here to explain the next step. Real quick, before we move on, I kind of wanted to show you two ways that I hold the legs as I'm working. So hopefully it will better help you because when I first started working, this is kind of a small hole and this is the leg. So I either hold my finger right here, kind of like a little glove <laughs> on my finger and I crochet into each and move around that way. Or you could kind of lay it flat and then work into your stitches that way. So those are two ways that I work around these smaller areas or the smaller, yeah, smaller rounds. <laughs> I hope that helps. So I'll meet you back when we've done the rest of the single crochets up till round eight. So we could go ahead and remove our stitch marker and we're going to do a slip stitch into that next stitch. So I don't know how everyone does their slip stitches. This is how I do them. Instead of going through and fastening off like that, I work my slip stitch this way. So I finished off my last stitch for round eight and I'm gonna insert my hook into the next stitch and pull my yarn through and then slip it through. And then I'm gonna cut it off there. So I want a good amount, not super long, just a couple inches and then I'm going to pull that through and tighten it just a bit. Then I'm going to take my crochet hook and I'm going to bring this yarn through. Now we don't want it super short because that could come out eventually. So I leave a couple inches and then I tuck that into the leg and that shouldn't come out. And that's how I fasten off for the leg. So I want you to go ahead and make another leg and I will meet you back so that we could join them together and create our torso. All right, so I went ahead and did my other leg. And before we continue on with the torso, let's stuff the leg. So we're gonna take small bits of our stuffing and we are going to stuff the leg. And we don't wanna fill it too much because we're gonna join these legs together and work around them. And we don't want to crochet over some of the stuffing because that won't look pretty and it gets pretty frustrating. <laughs> 
when it gets caught in our hook on our hook. All right, so we're going to continue stuffing. My kids. <laughs> All right, just a little bit more, and I think that should be good. I think that's a little too much, so I'll take some of that away. And I'll show you right now about how much I stuff. I, I love to use these hooks for um, stuffing. It's just like the perfect size. <laughs> so I go ahead and stuff to leave just, you know, I don't want it overflowing. And then I roll it in my hand like this to give it a good shape. Because sometimes it can fatten up and we don't want it to do that too much. All right, so I have both of my legs. And now what we're going to do some of that out of the way is we are going to join these legs together and work around them now that might seem a little intimidating but I promise it's really pretty simple so you could do a couple of things you could either like take your stitch marker or bobby pin or a needle and you could join these together like this and then add your hook and just start crocheting around. Or I'll show you the way I do it. And so basically what we want to do is we want to get 15 stitches crocheted evenly. So each leg is eight stitches. So that should be 16, but the pattern we work up is 15 total. So there's no exact stitch that you have to go into. You just want your stitches to be worked evenly without any huge gaps. So that's what we're gonna do right now. All right, so if we look at our legs and where we did our little slip stitch, you'll notice that there is just a little bit more elevate, like it's a little elevated here than it is there. It's okay, we don't need to worry about that because when we work in the round, when we work around this, it, will be, it won't even be noticeable. So I just wanted to let you know that. Um, so basically what I do is I take the legs and I kind of stand them together to make sure that they're even. And I push them and hold them like this. I'm gonna take my crochet hook and I'm gonna insert it through one stitch right there and then also into the next leg. So we have both legs just like this. We are going to join the body. So you're just gonna pull through like you were adding your yarn to any project. We're gonna get this tail yarn out of the way and we're gonna do our slip stitch. This does not count for any stitch. So now we're gonna work around these legs. So let me come close. This stitch right here is where we join with the slip stitch. It might be a little difficult to get into. So we don't really need to worry about that stitch right now because technically we need to cut out a stitch because there's 16 total. So I'm going to work into this stitch right here. It's really easy to go into. And then I'm gonna pull up and that will be my first single crochet. Now yours might be different because you might have joined your legs together a different way, but it's okay because you just want to crochet 15 single crochets evenly all the way around. So we have, fifth, or we have our first stitch. So that's one, two, three, four, and I just kind of hold it. Sometimes that leg might come up. Five, six, seven. So I won't count throughout this whole pattern, I promise. I just wanna do it for this round because it might be confusing. So we've done seven stitches and we're about to meet with the other leg. So if you'll see here, we have this gap right here. So we're gonna insert our hook right there and that will be our eighth stitch, okay? So our legs are joining together nicely. Nine, 10, let me come back into frame, 11, 12. All right, so we have 12 stitches. Okay, so let's go into that stitch 
and then we're gonna work into this stitch now. So let's see how that looks. That looks really nice. It's really clean. There isn't a huge gap. I'm gonna go back around because I can't tell if I'm on the 13th or 14th stitch. So we're gonna count one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So I have these two stitches right here. I am gonna do a decrease over these stitches. You might have a different stitch count than me because we just wanna do it evenly. So if you have enough and you get 15, go ahead and do it. I'm gonna do a decrease because I want 15 stitches and I don't want there to be a huge gap. So like my other patterns before, when we do a decrease, we're going to work it over the front loop only. So I'm going to insert my hook into this front loop right here and bring it around into that next stitch. I'm going to pull my yarn through both of those and then I'm gonna pull through the remaining two loops. All right, I hope you're still with me. I promise that this pattern is not as complicated as this round. This is probably the most complicated and there isn't a lot of stitches. So you basically, like I've said, you just want 15 single crochets evenly around your legs without a huge gap. So now I'm gonna stuff this little bit of yarn into the leg. Let me get that off. And then let's take a little peek at what we got going on here. So let's pull that out just a little bit. So now our legs are joined and we're gonna to continue to work on the torso. That is probably the most complicated part of this whole doll, I promise. And she works up so easy. So once you get past that, honestly, like that's the most complicated part. Um, so yes, so let's continue working. So we finished the hardest round of the whole pattern. So we had eight rounds for the legs and the ninth round is when we joined. So now we're going to move on to round 10. So rounds 10 through 15 will have one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. And I will meet you back when you have completed that. All right, so we did one single crochet in each stitch for all the way up for till round 15. So we, are, we just finished round 15 with one single crochet into each stitch. So now what we want to do is we want to stuff our doll a little bit more before we do our decrease round. Now we are going to do a decrease round and this is gonna bring her shoulder neck area. So this is round 16. We're going to work one single crochet into that first stitch and we're going to do a decrease over the next two stitches. So we're going to do our decrease in the front loops of the next two stitches. So I put my hook through that front loop of that first stitch we're going to go through and then I turn it and put it through the front loop of the next stitch. So now I have three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through two of those loops then yarn over and pull through the last two and that is my decrease and we're going to repeat that all the way around and that should give us a total of 10 stitches at the end of round 16. So one single crochet and then a single crochet decrease.
right, so for round 17, you're going to work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. 18. Round 18 is going to be an increased round and this is where our head is going to start to form. So before we do that, let's go ahead and stuff her body just a, or the body just a little bit more. Just stuff it enough to where it's almost full, but we don't want it to overflow. That way we don't get our hook caught on any of this stuff. For round 18, you're going to do two single crochets into each stitch all the way around. That should give you a total of 20 single crochets for round 18. We're going to work another increase round and the pattern repeat is one single crochet into the first stitch and two single crochets into the next. And that will be the repeat, repeat for the whole round. So one single crochet, a single crochet increase. And you should have a total of 30 single crochets for round 19. So don't forget to move your stitch marker up like me because then you could forget where you left off. Round 20. So as you could tell, our head is starting to form. We have done all of our increase rounds and we are going to do five rounds. So round 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24 are all going to be one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. And that should have a total of 30 single crochets in each of those rounds. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back at the end of round 24. And we are going to put in our safety eyes. I will put a link to the Amazon to Amazon <laughs> for the safety eyes that I get. Um, I find that it's cheaper to purchase them that way. So these are nine millimeter safety eyes. We are going to place them in between round 22 and 23. So we want to look for the center of our doll and you could either do it this way, go up one, two, three, four rounds and then put your safety eyes in and just kind of play around with making sure that they look even or if it helps you to understand it's between round 22 and round 23. And I normally do them about four stitches apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at that. So yes, so you're going to place your safety eyes, I'll just review that again. Safety eyes go in between round 20, two and round 23, four stitches apart, and just make sure that they look just centered and even. So now we could go ahead and put the safety backings in. One, and the next one, two. All right. So there are our eyes, and now let's go ahead and stuff our um, neck area. So grab your stuffing, and I got some more doll scissors. I felt like the other ones <laughs> didn't look very safe. So I don't wanna encourage anyone to use sharp scissors and get hurt. But I do find that um, scissors do help. So just, of course, be safe. Um, and yeah. So go ahead and use your whatever tool you like and get your stuffing in so that her neck area can be better supported.
But what's really neat about this pattern is that you don't need anything extra to help the body stay in place. I don't put anything for neck support. I don't put anything for leg support. It's literally just yarn and the polyfill stuffing. So I'll stop right there and we're gonna move on to our next round, round 25. So real quick, before we move on to round 25, I just wanted to show you, I'm stuffing the head a little bit more, but not enough to where it's gonna interfere with continuing on to our next round, which is going to be a decrease round. And I'm just kind of pushing the yarn in so that it's going around evenly. And I'm gonna leave it about right there. So now let's take a peek. So our doll is stuffed up pretty firm, but not over stuffed. And then her neck is supported now with the stuffing that we put in. So she's not gonna be too wobbly. And now we could continue on to our next round. So let's work on round 25 now. We have 30 stitches and we're going to work a single crochet into the next three stitches. And then we are going to do a decrease. And that is the pattern repeat. Round 26 is another decrease round. We are going to work one single crochet into the next two stitches. Remember to place your stitch marker or move it up and then a decrease over the next two. So the pattern repeat is one single crochet into the next two stitches and then a single crochet decrease. And that should give you a total of 18 single crochets. Moving on to round 27. So we're going to work one single crochet and then a single crochet decrease all the way around. And that should give you a total of 12 stitches. All right, so now we are going to stuff the doll head and then finish up our last round. So go ahead and grab your stuffing and stuff her head up or the doll's head. I don't know why I keep saying her. I think I say her because mostly I make princess dolls and with this pattern. <laughs> so I think that's why. Although I do make, um, I have made superhero dolls as well. And I do plan to do tutorials for all of those. Um, I just wanted to start with the basic doll pattern. That way, if you guys have any dolls you wanna make out of it, but then I will do step-by-step -step tutorials on all of the other dolls that I make. So yes, go ahead and just continue to stuff. I just move the doll around and see where I feel like it needs more stuffing. So what I'm doing here is I am just kind of taking either, I usually take my bobby pin or I take my yarn needle and I just kind of maneuver the eyes as needed. So 
Sorry guys, I lost the footage for round 28. We went ahead and finished stuffing and now I'm gonna show you how to close this gap right here. So what I do is we have one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. So we're gonna basically do a decrease with this yarn needle. And this will help give it a really clean closure. So you're gonna take your yarn needle and you're gonna go through like you were with your hook. So you're gonna wrap around both and pull through. And then you're gonna do that again. So that will be wrap around both, front loop only and pull through. And one more time and then I'm gonna show you the magic. Wrap around both and pull your yarn. Now we are gonna pull this working yarn all the way and close it up. And that gives it a nice clean closure. So depending on how you stuffed it, um, you might have a little bit of gap. Normally, of course, with the dolls themselves, when we do the hair, that's gonna be closed. And even when it comes to some of the superheroes, they have masks, and so that gets worked and that gets closed over anyway. So um, just depending on what you do with your doll, normally you don't really have this exposed. I think this does get exposed when I do my White Rabbit from Alice in Wonderland, but then with the ears on there, you don't, you can't even really tell. So I'm gonna work my yarn back and forth sometimes it's hard I just kind of use my scissors to I just work the yet the yarn back and forth that way it doesn't come out or anything so I just kind of go back and forth and then I'm going to cut it off and that is your doll's body and all we have left to do is the arms so we're going to make the arms and sew them on and that is the basic doll body so let's move on to arms. Arms are really simple. We're going to start with a magic ring, like we did with our leg, and we're going to work six, six single crochets into that magic circle. We're going to pull to close that up and we should have a total of six single crochets so that was round one rounds two through seven are going to be one single crochet into each stitch all the way around so one two three four five six so go ahead and work your first single crochet and place your stitch marker And work one single crochet all the way around. So before we move on to round three, we are going to tie off our tail twice. And this time I like to leave this tail in there because I don't stuff the arms. I just kind of use that remainder as it's stuffing because they need to lay flatter onto the body. So we're going on to round three and we're going to again work one single crochet into each stitch. So as you're doing that we're going to turn and have the wrong side kind of form a cup. So you're going to have the right side on the outside and then the wrong side on the inside, of course. And then we did our first stitch for round three and we're going to move our stitch marker up. And then we are gonna continue again with one single crochet into each stitch. And that is the pattern repeat for all the way up until round seven. But I just wanna show you, because it can be a little difficult to work with this smaller arm to get all those stitches in So now 
just kind of until we get a few more rounds in, I would just kind of move your tail out of the way. Round four again, one single crochet into each stitch. All the way around. And just make sure to move your tail out of the way. It might feel a little weird or hard at first if you have never done amigurumi before or had made arms or anything that is this small. But just take your time and I promise you'll be able to do it. It will become a second nature. <laughs> All right, so I, went, I finished off round four. We'll continue on to round five. I'm going to do my first stitch and move my stitch marker up. And then we're going to tuck in that tail. So what I do is I pull out just a little bit, that way that doesn't come out. And then I take my scissors and I push that in. And that's all the stuffing that you're going to need for the arm. So for rounds five through seven, continue working one single crochet into each stitch, and I will meet you back at the end of round seven. So I went ahead and finished round seven. We can now take our stitch marker out, and what we're going to do is we're going to close in our arm. So you're going to work two single crochets over these stitches right here to close it. So take your hook, insert it into that next stitch and close this shut and bring it through back over to the stitch across it. You're going to pull your yarn through and then pull through both loops. And you're gonna do that one more time. So you basically are just closing this shut. So working it through both sides to close it and working your single crochet and that closes the arm up go ahead and cut off about 12 inches no probably about 12 to 18 inches of yarn so that you have enough to sew the arm on so there is the arm so you have a little bit of stuffing at the bottom to form a hand but then this lays flat on the doll so we're gonna end up sewing her arms on, or the doll's arms on, like, like so. So go ahead and make one more of these arms and I will meet you back so that we could sew them onto our doll. So we have both of our arms done and now we're going to sew them onto the body. So go ahead and get your yarn needle. Let me cut that off, that was a little fuzzy. I cannot find my bigger yarn needle right now. I need to actually go out and buy another one. So I'm using this smaller one, but it's okay. Go ahead and grab your yarn needle and you're going to bring the arm center in the middle of the head. So you wanna line it up with the leg and then you're going to take your yarn and insert it into the doll, bring it through to about where the arm meets right there. And then you're going to pull your yarn through. And then you're going to take your yarn needle and you're going to go through these two stitches right here or wherever, just enough to grab the arm and attach that to the body. And pull your yarn through and sh the arm is about on, but what I like to do is I go back through and bring the needle so that it's popping through the middle of the top of the arm. And then I take it back down and just work it through. So this is just my little process on attaching the arms, but however you feel comfortable to attach them and whatever makes them secure, then go ahead and attach them that way. But I feel like that gives a pretty seamless attachment right there. Then I take my yarn and work it through the body just about two to three times enough so that I know it's not gonna come through. 
and then I cut off the remainder of that yarn and now we are going to attach the other arm so we're going to do the same process let's go ahead and get our yarn tail end I mean and then we are going to bring the arm center with the leg and so now I'm going to start closer to the face and you're going to insert your hook and bring it back around onto the other side. Grab the arm on this back side and pull your yarn through. Hold it in place, bring it a little tighter, then insert it back into the body and pull through. Tighten that up. And now we're going to go back around into the middle of the arm like we did before and bring our yarn through. And then again, bring it back through the body and tighten it up. So that's the back of the doll. And so now her, the doll's arms <laughs> are on. And I'm gonna weave in just a few times and then we will cut off our yarn. And that is it. It is, I hope that it's super simple and easy for you guys. I wanted to again create this, a pattern. When I made this pattern, I wanted to have a doll that I could work up, you know, relatively quickly, um, but that wasn't too small and wasn't too big. And I feel like this is just the right size. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up. Um, and if you would like to stay tuned and see more of my videos, then click that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you could be notified whenever I post new videos and tutorials. So yes, thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time.